in the previous video. So this video is still on representation theory. In the previous video, we um, saw the concept of uh, equivalence between two uh, representations. Okay, so now we are going to see one example of an equivalence between two uh, representations. We define phi as being z, the, the factor group z by nz, and this is mapped into general linear uh, two group uh, with complex entries. And we are going to define this representation. And as you can see, we are not uh, anymore on representations of dimension one. So now we jump to dimensions two. So by phi of m, so m will be the, the entry from the group. Right, and the image is in the general linear uh, group. Okay. So uh, we define this, the representation by this um, matrix. Okay. Uh, it is well known that this is the matrix uh, rotation by 2 pi m n. If you want to to check a couple of values, just put some n here and some m's here, and you will see that this is the, the a matrix rotation. OK, uh, now we take another um, another representation uh, psi that will take us from the factor group z by nz to the general linear group 2 by 2 with complex entries and let psi be defined this way so M here, the entries from the group, and uh, in the general linear group, we'll have this matrix. E to the power of 2 pi M i over N, 0, 0, E, and minus 2 pi M i over N. OK, as we saw in the previous video, uh, phi, the first representation, and psi, the second representation, they are uh, equivalent. OK, let us check that that is true. OK, to see if they are true or not, I'm just going to quickly to, to make a quick revision from the previous video what an uh, equivalence is. So we have two representations, phi from G to the general linear group on a vector space V, and psi that takes G from the general linear group to a, a vector space W. They are said to be uh, equivalent. They are said to be equivalent if there exists an isomorphism T that take us from this V to that W, V that take from V to W, such that this is an ISO, OK? Um, so I think you remember this if you watched the previous video. So we said that psi of G equals T, the ISO, um, times phi of g times the inverse, in a way the conjugate for all g in g, or if you if you multiply this one by t and this one by t, right multiply, you will get this one, psi of gt, and this here you get the identity, so, or this, okay. So let us check if this is true, so we need 
we have a now we have a phi and we have a psi right so we have to find a d for our phi and so so i claim that that role of t is going to be played by this matrix a where a is the matrix i minus i 1 1 and the inverse is 1 over 2 i 1 i minus 1 i i think i did not make any mistake okay so let us jump into computations quick revision so we defined phi taking from this group to the general linear group where phi was given by this matrix the rotation by 2 pi m over n okay and we also got psi right where psi is taking us from this group to the general linear group and psi of m is given by this uh, matrix and uh, we said that phi is equivalent to psi or there is an equivalence between phi and psi okay so we need this iso t as we saw uh, in the previous video and i say that a is that t that we need okay we are going to get into some heavy computations right um, and this is supposed a inverse times phi of m times a they are equivalent if at the end we get this right okay let's do the computation and see if that's what happens so a inverse i'm going to put the a inverse here phi of m i'm going to get phi of m and then a okay so this is a inverse now phi of m here okay here we are so uh, this is a inverse this is phi of m and this is a okay um, I'm not going to do the calculations so you will check that we have psi of ham here in the end what you get really is this e to the power of 2 pi m i over n 0 etc but this is multiplying by this 1 over 2 i 1 over 2 i so this will end up cancelling out and here you have psi of m so the it is proved that phi is equivalent to psi 